Welcome back to another episode of Live with Brian. Y'all got two beautiful people with me. We got Brooke and we got Kenny. Let me tell y'all something. The intro we had before this was way fire and way better than what I'm about to do, but it is what it is. It is what it is. So we're going to dive into it. All right. So today's topic is a little bit of um, mental health tied with, um, I guess we're going to talk about anime and some other stuff. I don't know how we're going to segue into Kenny's portion, but we're going to make it do what it do. So let, before we even get things going, expl- y'all already know who I am. Hey, I'm Brian. Welcome back. to yeah, y'all been here. Who are you and what you do? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brooklyn and I am a mental health therapist, a counselor. Um, and that's about what I do. I just like to talk about mental health. I like to research, learn different things. And she funny. Is hell. Pretty funny. Um, I'm her her partner, her life her life partner, if you will. I'm Uncle Kenny. Y'all can call me Kenny Wade. I am a singer songwriter, music producer, all that fun stuff. Um, y'all might have heard some of my songs. If you haven't, go check me out. And that's me. I like to talk about music and anime and and Marvel and all that fun stuff. So. And I'm gonna be plugging their voluntary uh, links down below. I, I feel like Brooke not gonna want y'all to get her Instagram, but you know that's that's her business. That's gonna that's gonna that's her business. But anyways, let's hop into it. So the first question, y'all see my little boy. The first question is, what is mental health? And this is going to be, now the main character for this part is going to be Brooke. So don't be looking at me for no answers and don't be looking at Kenny. This is what she do. Me and Brian so got like, all the answers. Uh, what he said. <laughs> so what is mental health? Ooh. So I ain't going to lie. I low-key Googled that question right before this started just to have a invigorated memory of what mm-hmm. mental health is. But <laughs> <laughs> mental health, it kind of, it encompasses just your mental health like it sounds like my mental health my emotional well-being um just all of the things that are happening in my brain in my environment in my body that have an impact on how i show up in the world on my behaviors on my emotions actions thoughts feelings all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. what is mental health to you mental health to me is everything that she just said to be honest with you is um so once again brooke is gonna be the main exactly she is the main character stop asking kenny questions (laughs) yes yes everything that she basically said um Mental health for me is basically just the well-being. And like I said, everything she said. I was going to say something else. I thought I had some more thought-provoking, but no, she got it. What is it to you? Like, how do you consider? I consider mental health, like, like just the the practices that you take in order to maintain it, to make sure it's clear, make sure it's, like, Mm -hmm. you know, different things that you have to learn about yourself. I consider that mental health, um, a lot of things like that self-care like you say it's pretty spot on Sp- very spot on <laughs> mm-hmm. so being that we can I, f- I feel like we can all agree that our definitions of mental health is in the personal right so do you guys feel as though based off of uh how social media and just the media in general like push these things on people do you feel like there's an attack specifically you Brooke? do you feel like it's an attack on mental health right now what do you mean by attack so i or, or let's say is it is are there agendas you do you feel like there's any type of agendas going on right now towards mental health or the persuading of the hive mind mentality that's already social media okay so i don't feel like there's this like agenda or a particular attack but what i do see a lot is a lot of people that are like so i got on tiktok i think i have adhd Mm -hmm. or i got on instagram and i think that i'm codependent or something like that and there's no real knowledge beyond like a a quick post or like a 30 second reel and it's someone has like diagnosed themselves and potentially now they have this like catastrophic reaction about their mental health or maybe it is something that meshes with them that they didn't know that they struggled with before but what happens is almost like again not an agenda people are definitely finding out more about themselves but sometimes it can be a little bit toxic or it can be a little Mm bit um I don't know the word. It could just be unhealthy when it goes to the realm of like, mm-hmm. I am self-diagnosing on a mm-hmm. screen based on something I have no knowledge about. So what what is toxic to you? Mm. Toxic can be like, this has become my whole identity and not a piece of it. Mm-hmm. So like if I have anxiety, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. And so then anxiety becomes my whole identity yeah. because... I don't know, like, maybe society makes me feel like this Mm -hmm. is my whole identity, or if I have social anxiety, or if I have depression, and now it's just kind of encompassing all of who I am instead of just being, Mm -hmm. like, a small piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. So do you you feel as though is that from, or that happens due to lack of individuality? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. (laughs) (laughs) Is it lack of individuality? Or, Or sense of self. Let's say that, sense of self. Sense of self. Sometimes, because I feel like a lot of us don't have like 
a good idea of our sense of self or we don't even know what it takes to achieve a sense of self. Mm -hmm. So I can see what you're saying, but I I don't agree with that, like, lack of individuality. I think Mm -hmm. it's more so, like, I just want to fit in somewhere. I just want to belong somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so when I see a whole bunch of people talking about these weird symptoms that I Mm -hmm. felt like nobody else was going through, then boom, yeah, I'm going to... So what what is sense of self to you and how does that per se tie, whether it be positive or negative, to that experience for a a person, generally Mm -hmm. speaking? Sense of self. So sense of self is like your idea of your values. It's your idea of just kind of who you are, what's important to you. Um, where do you see yourself going in the future? What do you like? What do you dislike? Like just kind of having this well-rounded idea of like, this is who I am and you can't take this away from me sort mm-hmm. of thing. Um, and what's the second part of the question? How does that essentially tie to like the persuasion or like the hive mind society that we talked mm-hmm. about? Because I think it's like you find a purpose, almost like cults in a way. Like mm-hmm. those people, I don't think they went into cults thinking like, oh, well, I'm joining a cult today. It's right. more so like we have this sort of purpose that we form together mm-hmm. and it feels good because I'm in community with other people. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's what happens with sense of self and just kind of like finding your way on social media with mental health is like this is a community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. So that brings me to the next topic. So we talked about, did we talk about, no, we didn't talk about self-care yet. So we mentioned it earlier. So... Do you feel that, well, for one, what is self-care to you? What are some things you do for self-care? And how does that pertain to mental health? Okay, so three parts. Okay, self-care is, like it sounds, like taking care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, all the parts. Um, What I do for self-care is I try to journal a lot, (laughs) write my feelings down, get my anger out. Trying to not act like you don't have anger and negative right, emotions. That's right. really important. Most definitely. Um, yes. And then also some other things I do, like just getting in touch with my inner child. So like what's... What is that exactly? Okay. I, I see a lot of that on social media. Mm-hmm. I have yeah. my own like <laughs> ideas on it, but I mean, you're the psychologist, so... I ain't a psychologist. Well, a therapist, you know. <laughs> yeah. But I think the inner child is kind of like... It... You kind of tap into it when you think about trauma. So when you're thinking about, like, what is it that I went through in the past that's gotten Mm -hmm. me here? What wasn't nurtured when I was little? Mm -hmm. And then having to reparent yourself and giving yourself, like, asking my inner child, what do you need today? You know, and if I'm feeling really scared about something, like, what does that tell me? But also sometimes when you think about your inner child, you might start talking like a kid, you know, Mm -hmm. or you might start just having an emotion for something like just unregulated and not knowing why but essentially what inner child work is is like let me revisit the past see what's maybe undone there and then in the future like how can i nourish it going forward Mm -hmm. so that's something i like to do inner child work it's not the funnest thing in the world not the Mm -hmm. easiest thing um and then just other stuff like i like to watch a lot of tv (laughs) that's a mind-numbing type of walking yeah and you have to have active or passive self-care so like active self-care is more so like i'm saying journaling or if i'm working on setting a boundary with someone Mm -hmm. like those things that's going to get me to my next goal yeah and then passive self-care is like the mind-numbing things or like Mm -hmm. just like taking a bath or talking to a friend about which i hope y'all do every day yes (laughs) please Please do shower something yeah yeah that's that's the stuff that i would do and then the last part of the question before we dive into part three because okay. i you, you said something that made me think about something so wouldn't i ain't gonna say what my per se perception of uh inner child is but i what makes me what i research um that drove me to research monks because mm-hmm. what i believe off of just based off of what i've studied when it comes down to sociology and stuff like that is you if you give me the first seven years of a child i'll show you who that person is for the rest of their life because what I found out that a lot of monks do, they take these children or they give the monks these children to be raised or to be indoctrinated with whatever their ideology mm-hmm. is out there. It depends from temple to temple or practice to practice. And you'll see the birthing of a collective, once again, hive mind society based off of that. So when you say inner child, mm-hmm. I start thinking about like how powerful the literally the beginning of our lives, fresh out the womb to the yeah. age of eight of like how much that plays a role because i think of oftentimes think about and and mama i love y'all i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sound crazy on you i'm just gonna put that out there because i know they be watching my videos i'm not going i'm not saying nothing crazy but nobody's perfect you know i i didn't have the best um 
what's the word, cognitive function coming up because I was a very adventurous and curious child. Mm -hmm. You know, so like my first seven years was trying to figure out like, well, as far as what I can remember is like dexterity because I'm left-handed, you know, so everybody in the house is right-handed and I'm left-handed. How to function in the house, like how to move things around. Like if I even play something a certain type of way, it quote unquote doesn't look right because to y'all, y'all used to, oh, well, putting it like that is like, well, that's not accessible for me. You know, developing my social skills because... I mean, y'all know me to be talkative and I can have a conversation with anybody. Right. That didn't start till high school. Mm. Barely that. I, honestly, college. Because, like, I was really, I was out there, but, like, I was kind of, like, shy into myself. It's like, if I'm comfortable around you, you'll get me. Yeah. But if I'm not comfortable with you, it's like, what, what, what's happening? You know? And, but, like, now, I don't care where I'm at. If you want to talk, we can talk. Just don't disrespect me. I'm not going to disrespect you. Yeah. yeah. You know? But when people start talking about, like, because that makes me think about what they call shadow work, which we're going to dive into next. Oh, yeah. But, like... When it comes down to like your inner child and stuff like that, when I first read that, I didn't know how to take that because I'm like, what y'all mean inner child? Like it makes sense, but I was like, but what does that actually mean? Yeah. So the last part of that part that we're talking about was um, how does self care or doing those things that you stated benefit us in a positive and negative way as far as like doing it and not doing it in our everyday life? Okay, so benefits positive is because I think one you'll just like naturally feel better i think that's something people struggle with it's just the motivation to even feel better Mm because it's like i get stuck in feeling like anxious or i get stuck in like this is just my life and i'm so used to this discomfort that i'm scared to try something new yes and so i think that's like one of the positive things is like you get to kind of have the baby steps and that's what i always tell clients and everything it's like you don't have to start super big with Mm -hmm. self-care like literally self-care might be i brush my teeth today or like I took a shower today Mm -hmm. Um, but that's I think the positive benefits is just that I'm going to feel better my relationships with other people is going to be better Um, and then also just like as I move forward in life, whatever opportunities come my way, I might feel more deserving of them Mm -hmm. like just things like that oh that's big, that's big big. Um, and then negatively I mean if you I mean, I would say before, can, before we, because that okay. that deserving part caught me. I ain't even gonna lie to you. <laughs> so, so the reason why I, I like that hit me hard was because like right specifically right now in my life, a lot of things are starting to take off how I need them to take off. Mm-hmm. But I'm also undergoing change, which can be uncomfortable. Yeah. So it's like as I'm adjusting and moving forward and doing what I feel as though is best for me and the people that I I'm around and who I love and stuff like that and how I interact with people. It's like I've gotten to this point of always having to keeping my head down, working and staying focused to where like when it's time for me to get my flowers or if it's like I even told that to you not so long ago. I have a problem receiving compliments mm-hmm. because like all I do is study to show myself approved, you know, like right. especially when I first went about on TikTok. You got so many people saying like, you don't know, blah, 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 blah. And I've been doing this for like seven years. Just because yes. I've been on here for six months doesn't mean I haven't been doing this for a while. Yeah. You know, and like I take, y'all know me. I take the time to, I read all day. That's all I do. You know, so it's like in between that and my clients as well. And to feel deserving of what's coming. Like I have an app coming out. I just dropped a book the other day. You know, like I even had apprehensions about dropping my book because mm-hmm. it's like, I feel as though it's a perspective that people, because I'm, I'm not... I try not to be an extremist. You know, it's like in my in my line of practice, you have people that do things the way that most people feel as though it's the healthier way and people yeah. that don't feel like it's that, but both sides are getting results. So yeah. I try not to be an extremist like I used to be because that's just my, I'm a habitual type of person. I, I can be very routine and passionate. Yeah. So it's like, I'm in a place now to where it's like, I'm going to take the best of what works for both parties because my job and my passion is people, not necessarily being right. So I can I don't have at this point I don't have no problem being corrected or even going back and relearning something to reteach something but at the same time my intentions and where I'm coming from is strictly for people. So I get so caught up in dealing with everybody else and pouring out this that in the third to where it's time for me to get the promotion that I've always wanted and the things the monetary things that's coming to me yeah. and even the benefits moving forward with relationships like with people like y'all and stuff like that. Yeah. At first I'm like do I deserve this? Because mm-hmm. it's like you get and not even like not to say that I don't I don't feel good about myself or like as if I don't deserve anything but it's like it's a leap we get so used to just like working 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 doing 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 to our life when stuff just starts happening for no reason it's like god thank you for the blessing but what I did like like, it's an apprehension like what what I do to get this you know so that's that's why yeah when you say deserving that that struck me sometimes it's self-sabotage too because it's like I've never been in a place where I feel like things are coming to me easy like right that's your story yeah and so then it's like okay well now things are happening like maybe something's about to go wrong yeah exactly exactly see and that's Mm -hmm. how 
I ain't gonna say it was because it's not a hurdle, but like that's one of the things that used to perplex me when we when me and Amber first started dating because I've never been in a relationship that was this transparent, yeah. that was this constructive. Like we might get in an argument, which is rare, but we might get in an argument or a disagreement about something, and it doesn't end with like, oh, she about to break up with me, blah blah blah. It's more so like the next day, okay, let's finish this conversation. Yeah. Let's really get an understanding about it, and that was. It took me a while to adjust to that because, like, I'm the type of person where, like, if you're going to talk about it, you get ready to talk about it. Yeah. You know, but, like, but we're going to get through it together. You know, so it's it's just amazing to to be at least surrounded by people like y'all that will, that can help me get through that because it's, like, I don't be, in all honesty, I don't feel like I deserve that sometimes. But, like, mm-hmm. I'm in a place now to where it's, like, just me growing as a person. Like, okay, not to say I expect it because I, I do, but I don't in a sense. Yeah. I don't want to get... I guess is I guess is me not wanting to become cocky or arrogant. Right. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, that's that's due unto me. But it's like, if I were to feel that type of way, I feel like it's from a sense of I've worked this hard. Exactly. People I'm don't. Really people too. haven't seen the first few years when me and her moved together, and literally every cent that came through this house went to the house. Couldn't mm-hmm. out like when, before we moved in together. It's like before I quit my job to start doing all of this. Like I was at the airport. Gigging and stuff like that, making you know, making money, and then yeah. like every week was a date week, and I'm I'm romantic, so it's like I like dates, I like yeah. gifts, I like spoiling her, you know. So it's like when that check <laughs> went from X amount of dollars to like, well, the bills are paid, yeah. you know. It's yeah. like, and then I've ever since I moved out of my parents' house, I've never been back, and it's going on like ten years. I want to say it's been, and I don't like relying on people for nothing. Hyper yeah. independent, exactly, and it's like, and, and like still to this day, even my dad and them talked about last time we was at the house. He was like. Nah, think about it. Y'all never asked for nothing since y'all moved out. Well, me, I'm the only ch- uh, child that moved out. And I was like, I don't, to me, it's like, it's it's kind of, it feels like a step backwards. It's like I moved out for a reason. I moved yeah. out to form my own life and my own, you know, if I'm going to go through something, like, if I, unless I really need it. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm, if I really yeah. need it, I'm asked for it. <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's going to have to be like, we getting kicked out tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, like, it's that type of situation. But I already made a promise to her. I was like, you know what? I'm not. I'm never gonna put you in that situation. If this stuff doesn't start working out, I don't got no problem flipping no burgers because right. yeah. the bills got to get paid. That's exactly. true. You know, but like that's just is just going back to what we initially said because I feel like I, I feel myself getting on topic. <laughs> it's like it's it's really hard to transition from not having and oh, then yeah. to have and feel as though you deserve it without being cocky or arrogant about it. I feel like that's my dilemma. Not yeah. not not so much. Like, oh, I'm not supposed to have blah, 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 blah. No, I receive it. But yeah. it's like, it's just like a, ooh, okay, what's next? You know, mm-hmm. like, that's why I'm real frugal. Because mm-hmm. I said, like, everything, I, unless it's time for me to invest it, I'm not, you can, I don't like spending money. Yeah. I don't like spending money. I'm glad you said that, too, because I'm, whenever you said about being cocky, I'm that exact same way. Ever since I was younger, like, like seeing people that were cocky that I grew up with, mm-hmm. and it's like, I don't ever want to be like that, because that's so annoying. It's like, yeah. it's, it's such a pest type thing is like yeah it's such an annoying energy to it and it's like i'm like so whenever things happen to me or whatever i'm like good 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 but i also back shy away be like okay cool it was good i could do better next time you like, can be scared of your own greatness yes yeah. yes terrified of your yes. own greatness so it's like i'm glad that you said that because i'm like i'm i'll I be sometimes i feel like something wrong with me i'm like why am i like yeah no for <laughs> like, real, for like, real. <laughs> Like why am I up in here like diminishing my accomplishment mm-hmm. my accomplishments? Which like do I do that shit all the time. <laughs> I do that shit all the time. He's like, a phenomenal singer, y'all. Like yeah. that Duke sing. And look, I was about to do it, I was about to say, oh, I'm alright. <laughs> but I do it all the time. But it's like it's just I don't know. I don't want to get in that and then people be like so whenever it does go down, people will be like, Oh, you, I guess it wasn't that good. I don't want to hear that. It's mm-hmm. just like I try yeah, I try to avoid it at all costs. Yeah. It's like, okay, I'm a, I'm good. I'm I'm cool. I could be better. You know, I'm well, getting what there. And I'll see that brings me back to the childhood thing. What That's in what our childhood makes us feel that way? Yeah. Okay. When you were talking about the monks, like that just brought up a good point to me. And like I've seen it said that like our life scripts, so like the story we have for our life, how it's supposed to go like who we're supposed to talk to is formed by the time we're six and mm-hmm. so if your life script from the time you were six let's say you grew up in a toxic household or you grew up in a positive household or whatever like that's your script mm-hmm. you know and if you've never thought to change it now it's like mm-hmm. when i get in these situations i am so used to everything that was mm-hmm. yeah god <laughs> i'm so used to <laughs> you're all for that but anyway <laughs> i'm so used to everything going bad or i'm so used to like when i'm crying as a baby maybe my mom didn't come and hold me mm. but that's the how we like know crib. that though you know what i'm saying it's like I, i'm sorry Therapy. i feel like it's imprinted i feel like mm. it that's true, true 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 
because subconsciously we consciously live yeah. you know like it's a it's yeah that makes sense did that but even thinking about like your earliest memory and so i think that can say a lot so if your earliest Ooh. memory was like your parents maybe not being there for you in a certain mm-hmm. way or maybe they were there for you and they like super were loving up on you but mm-hmm. thinking about what's the earliest thing that i remember about myself and like how does that even relate to my life mm-hmm. right now i think it usually does that makes sense mm-hmm. i feel like even down to like what we were talking about before the camera i'm not gonna bring that up but the person mm-hmm. that we were talking about on the camera off camera like i feel that even ties into like my biggest thing is like I want to make sure my family is good. Not mm-hmm. to say, not to say that like, look, just gonna put it out there. My mom and them had me their senior year of high school, and they worked very hard to get where they at right now. My parents, if y'all watching this, I'm proud of y'all mm-hmm. because like we always like even in the times that we quote unquote didn't have, my mom and them made sure that like we was at least good. Yeah, yes. you know. So, but we didn't grow up rich. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like me watching and being conscious. Of what's actually going on while still being grateful because i mean to be honest i wouldn't trade my childhood for nothing like it was fun all the family members and stuff that was going on you like right. you learn how to thrive throughout the struggle sometimes That's true. and it's like one of the biggest things that i guess that fuels me is from time to time is like me wanting to get to a place financially to where i can literally buy my parents their dream house yeah. i can i can literally like or employ them and i'm saying employ like this because it's like i can get to a point to where like my people good, you know, they're quote unquote employed under me. Yeah. But like I'm starting like an empire. Yeah. Because it may seem it may seem like nothing now. Like I ain't gonna put no numbers out there. It may not seem like num it may not seem like nothing now, but in my mind, I'm thinking about okay, we did this in six months. What can I do in the next year? Right. You know, because my parents are like luckily so my parents are still young. Like my parents had me their yeah, se- yeah think about it. I'm twenty seven. Yeah. My parents had me their senior year of high school. They're not even fifty yet. Right. Wow. Most people around you know what I'm saying? Most people around my age, like their parents are in their sixties. Yeah. You know, so it's like my like if, if my mom was to walk through this door right now, she can literally have a dance battle with me. Like I'm not even playing like my mom is like is like she's still my dad can still work yeah. like we still vibrant, you know, and right. I want them to see I just want in a sense like I guess making them proud. Yeah. Because I know well, not everything, but I, I know a lot of what my parents have gone through. And I, I mean, I was there. I watched them go from being high schoolers to like who they are now. Yeah. You know, so it's, I guess that's kind of like a building block. Because even though that kind of extends past the age of seven, that still influences your makeup as you as you grow older. You know, so it's just to wrap it up. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things where it's, it's like it makes so much sense how the very beginning of a child's life can determine everything. Because I have yeah. a friend. I ain't going to say her name. I have a friend right now and she does not know how to thrive in normality like in peace because she's grown up in yes. such a toxic household is like whenever whenever she's around stillness and nothing's going on and you could just go do your life blah 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 it's hell it's like i don't know like what you know yes. so it is, and it's like <laughs> you are, you have to always think back okay what was the i feel like that's questions that we don't ask people when we start dating them like how was your childhood yeah. Like what? Were, like what? For what sure. do you like? What's your most vivid, vivid memories? Yeah, you know. But I'm, let me stop. Y'all could. But that's the thing. Like you said, like she struggles to just sit in that peace and quiet. Mm-hmm. Like it's chaos. Like I'm like that. Yeah. Like I like chaos. Interesting. Certain, yeah, because I'm like, this is not normal. Like we need somebody's got to be yelling. Yes. Somebody's got to say mm-hmm. like we got to figure this out. Like it's the survival type of mind. And that's crazy yeah. how y'all feel comfortable like that. Yeah, and it's crazy because I'm me and her being together. It's like we're always having that narrative so if we're we're having a disagreement about something me i'm like okay say what i gotta say and forget it she may want to keep going and that's okay mm-hmm. that's that's totally okay if you want to do it but i don't want to keep going so it's like why are you why are you stopping like where you why are you walking away right now yeah. it's because i'm done with it but you're not mm-hmm. done with it and i have to you know you have to honor that with people you have to that's i think that plays a big part in knowing who people are like right right the, if you cherish that yes. relationship yeah exactly also attachment style yeah like that's for me break, please break that down too. please break that you're down that's in the wrong one <laughs> love, it, love it but it's a lot um yeah. i mean there's like this I would call it experiment, but it was basically done with kids and like I want to say the seventies. I don't want to be wrong, but y'all could do your own research. Yes, yeah. So Google. the experiment was like with different kids, seeing how they would react when their parent left the room or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so based on their reactions, they would get an attachment style. So it's like mm-hmm. anxious attachment, avoidant attachment, mm-hmm. disorganized. So it's more like a reactionary type thing. Not really. Kind of. Yeah, it's like a reaction, but it's also based on those experiences right, that you've had. Right. Like, were you neglectful of me? Were you there for me? Did you 
maybe like give me way too much permission to do certain things. Mm. So it's all of that. So I forgot what you were just saying, but whatever you were saying, <laughs> maybe think about attachment style. Mm-hmm. And I think that plays a big role in all that yeah. too. So I was just sabotage. yeah, I was just saying about being in relationships and like like knowing how people like operating in chaos. Yeah. That's what you were mm-hmm. saying. So. Yeah. You know, I grew up in a household where it was where I'm very optimistic secure. because my That's yeah I'm yeah I'm very secure in that way. So my parents mm-hmm. they were very okay. If something's going wrong, it's gonna be okay. We got it. We go figure it out. We got a mm-hmm. we got a plan to fix it or whatever. Mm-hmm. So and so if so whenever we have an argument or whatever, my initial thing is like okay, well how do I fix this? Yes, yes. That's my initial thing. Like okay, well it's gonna be okay. I apologize if that happened. It's gonna mm-hmm. be okay. How do I fix this? Not and, the corporate voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so like so if that doesn't work you know if that so if i bring it to her that sometimes it doesn't work because that's not how she operates that's not mm-hmm. how she was raised she wasn't probably wasn't raising that like let mm-hmm. me fix it real quick no. you know she's probably raising like uh let me sit with it a little bit mm-hmm. more type situation and that's so. what that's see we wanted the same because like i'm a i'm a hybrid i'm both but amber is more so like sometimes she just needs to chew on things Mm -hmm. you know and like to me y'all know me i don't like gray areas at all like it spooks me and either it it just does a lot to me and i had to kind of get used to giving her time because in my brain it's already like we arguing and i'm already processing solutions right because before when we get to that topic like okay here's the because i like to that's because i've used to not know how to talk to people and fail so much in relationships to where it's like now that I'm in one that I definitely want to keep right. and protect, is like I have to be two steps ahead because, like, in past relationships, Jesus Christ, communication was just butt cheeks. Like it was, it was just bad, you know. So, and I've been, I'm one of those people who's been cheated on by multiple partners before. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, you know, before this, and it's like it it molds you into a certain type of way. And I had to learn that typically it doesn't even really have to deal with you. Right. That's something that, that, that they're going through or something that they have to process. You know, so it's, it's just, it's, it's interesting. It's just real interesting to, you really think about like the seven years up until now and how all of that melds together. And you talk about attachment issues. Well, attachment, uh, we say behavior styles, styles yeah. attachment styles, and then like how that reacts and grows. Because like, in a sense, it's like, even though the first seven years is the core of you, you have the rest of your life to deviate. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, because you still, I mean, you're still going to be that person. Don't get me wrong. But it's like you get not to get too nerdy about it, but you get to remodify your character. Mm. You get right. to have different skill sets. And this, that. that's why I love and I want to talk about um, mental health, because I feel as though like even though it's trending for black people to like for us to have therapists and stuff now, yeah. Yeah. I feel as though one, it should have been trending. But two, we should have been like having not only that in our community, but that should have already been a norm. Yeah. Because we need those skills to move forward. Like I, me personally, I can't wait. I haven't done therapy yet, but I do a lot of like y'all know me. I I will talk to y'all about anything. Yeah. And then I will also do the research to be like, okay, well, let me learn it for. Because I mean, y'all, I mean, you read the books and you went to school to do what you do. Not saying that I can just do it and be you. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But like at the same time, I feel as though I can do enough due diligence to get a a grasp or understanding of it. Yeah. You know. But. Yeah. Um. I was going to say, it's it's almost like, I don't know how to say it. You made me think of something, but I think that's a good point. It's like people feel like, well, maybe I shouldn't go to therapy or maybe it's taboo or whatever. And they get stuck in their, that story. Like, mm-hmm. this is what my life has always been. And one of the things I like to do a lot, I have a lot of black, I think most of my clients are black that's women. Dope. And it's like we talk about narrative. Like, what's the narrative that you're telling yourself? Mm-hmm. What's the story? Yeah. And What you mean? So almost like it sounds like if I was writing a story about my life, what is that story? Also, so that, that conversation with yourself in your head. OK. Yeah. okay. And what parts of it can I change? Do I feel empowered enough to change it? Mm-hmm. But also like externalizing the problem, because when we look at our problems, we always think like it's me, like I'm the problem or it, I'm the cause of this or I'm the cause you think? of that. You think? <laughs> no, because I'm only saying it because I I think that way. I typically talk well, to myself, but I don't feel like most people do. Not, that. I, well, let me say this. I think some people are like internally like validating and they feel like well it's all because of me and there's some people that are more external where it's mm-hmm. like society oppression all mm-hmm. this different okay things. yeah 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 but like going to externalizing the problem is like it's not the person is not the problem but the problem is the problem mm-hmm. so it's like like i me being okay. an anxious person is uh-huh. the problem it's like the anxiety is the problem or like if somebody cheats on me it's like 
I'm not the problem, but the cheating, that's yeah. the problem. And mm-hmm. let's focus on that type of thing. So that's how I try to that's get into it. Like, let's change the literal narrative. And a lot of people don't even realize, like, this is a story I've told myself my whole life. And yeah. they, they're such depressing stories sometimes because yeah. it's like, wow, you've really lived so far, like, up to this point, thinking that, like, I'm not worth this or I shouldn't be doing that. Or you I don't even realize you're doing yeah. it. Oh, yeah. my God. And you have to feel like you have to listen to what people say. It's like, says who? Like, that's one of the things I ask all the time. Like, who said that? Oh, I, you didn't y'all need that? to book y'all a session with her. Because, <laughs> look, I'm about to book. <laughs> y- y'all take Blue Cross? But, yes, like, who said that? So, like, yeah. a lot of it is catching yourself in the moment. Like, I'm having a self-defeating thought right now. Mm-hmm. I'm having a self-defeating belief. I'm telling myself something that is just not true. I'm overgeneralizing mm-hmm. stuff like that. I mean, I do it a lot. That's how I know. I, but I feel, I feel <laughs> like it's so hard to catch that though, it is. on your own. It is because I'm. I mean, hell, I'm guilty of it. You know, so it's like I find myself not necessarily beating myself up, but like we talked about before, like with the blessings that's coming, being apprehensive yeah. about it. That starts within yourself. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like at least the work I've had to dig through to start getting to a place to where I I feel as though I can really. Like, oh, yeah, I deserve that yeah. wholeheartedly. You know, it's like just even catching that you're doing it to yourself. You don't realize it because we often look at life in first person. And I feel like that's a third person yeah. type experience. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's like stepping out yourself to to talk to yourself in a sense. Right. Think about it, too. Like, I have this automatic negative thought. Like, if we're putting it in, like, therapy terms, mm-hmm. it would be an automatic negative thought to think, like, I don't deserve this. But then also almost like thinking how do I want to say it that I have the power to change that narrative because sometimes Mm -hmm. people are like like I hear that all the time like I get what you're saying logically Mm -hmm. but I can't remind myself right exactly because you're in a moment yeah so I think it starts with like one having people hold you accountable Mm -hmm. but two sometimes it's like labeling that thing in your head like Mm -hmm. that inner critic Mm -hmm. if I want to name it I don't know Glenda and I'm gonna say Glenda Mm -hmm. is this huge person maybe Mm -hmm. it's an essence Maybe it's, I don't know, like, what color is it? Is mm-hmm. it black? Is it blue? Is it's it such whatever? a conscious thing. I love yeah. that. Yeah, and mm-hmm. just kind of being like, okay, well, this is not me talking right now. It's Glenda. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's people's parents. Like, I didn't say that. Dude, hold on. Now you wait. You put it into perspective right now. All right. You right. Because we, mm-hmm. dang. So, that, But that's a whole nother journey because who am I? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like now you get to the point to where it's like, okay, well, who who's really talking? Right. Dang. Yeah. Why y'all doing this to me? <laughs> and that's the reaction people have. Book y'all a therapist. <laughs> Preferably her. If she let me, we're going to put her, her schedule link in the, the <laughs> video. Book y'all some Brooke. Book y'all some Brooke. That's hey, what it is. Come on, right here. Book with Brooke. <laughs> we got Brooke. it. Let's go. But yeah, like asking yourself, like, who is it? And if it is my mom or if it is my dad, like, Think about that person. Do I even value the way they live their life? Mm. If I don't value how you're living your life, why does it have such an impact on the way I? But live you know life? what's crazy? I feel I feel like that's because when, especially in black households, we don't question parents. That's true. You're not raised to question your parents. You're sassy. You're disobedient. Right. Mm-hmm. Like thinking, but like now, not to say I'm not to say me and my mom to be arguing like that, but now me and my mom can have very constructive conversations. But it's like. I wouldn't even think, even if it even if it wasn't a big deal, even if it's something mi- just a minor disagreement, I wouldn't even think to challenge that back then, especially when yeah. I was living with him. <laughs> because it's yeah, like, yeah, whoa. <laughs> and look, my mom is not abusive. I'm gonna say that right now. But you, but y'all get what I'm saying? It's yeah. like that's just that stuff that that our parents learn from their parents. From you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like it's a pass down thing. But dang, when you really think about it, who's really talking? Cause it could I, be I, an ex. Man, like, it doesn't have to be your parents. You're right. Yeah. It could be a boss. It could be like you went to college mm-hmm. and you had a really hard teacher who graded yes. you really bad, and you're like, I just hear that in my head all the time. I'm like, you said, come on, Holy Spirit, talk up. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that 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 remind that brings me back to like, I just I just saw. It. I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring it back to my head. Hmm. It's it's like when we was talking about hive mind society and mentality. Like I feel like that's what I was saying. Like, is there an agenda? Even though you say no, mm-hmm. um, is like as far as like how we're being influenced via social media because. People don't, and I, I be trying to tell this to people all the time in my storyline. I, I really don't feel like people catch this. When you're reading other other people's opinions and thoughts and tweets and stuff like that, like you don't realize it. you're reciting that in your head Boy, and you're ingesting that. Like for the longest, my vernacular switched up, and I was like, 
Amber don't talk like that. And because that's who I spend the most time with. I was like, Amber don't talk like that. My clients don't talk like that. Where did I get this from? And I'm sitting there like, oh, oh, oh. And then, but as a, but you notice it throughout all of our, we like to call it culture, right. but like throughout all of the culture, now everybody's speaking a certain type of way. Everybody's doing this, that, and the third. Yes. But what people don't realize, the underlining things that come with that also gets ingested within you. Right. Yeah. You know? I try to curate, like personally, and I encourage people to do it. Like curate your feed to like only what literally feels good to you. Mm-hmm. Like even if you just got to Well, that's hard to do. It's it hard. It's hard. Very. But. Because look, I like a little consuming. bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't even going to lie to you. I'll say it is hard. But trying to curate it. But you're right. Like you're scrolling. And like you just took in the news. You just figured out somebody was bombed. Dude. Just, like, somebody got killed. And it's just like. It's a numbness sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Like I don't. What I really don't like, dude. There's two things I really don't like on social media. And because it, it's a social media. But it didn't start to social media. I don't like how people uh, find out somebody died. And go they the first ones. So, yeah. They'll go live. They'll post. It's like. Let the people who want to determine that. The family yes. do that. Yes. And another thing I don't like. Is like. Once they start. Like pumping out, oh, well, such and such got killed, blah, 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 and they're showing the videos. Yeah. Oh my we don't even, like, if you look at the something. average person, we're so quick to re- we're so quick to repost it, but, like, nobody has a genuine reaction to it anymore. Yeah. I'll what, be the first to tell you. Like, when I see that kind of stuff, that's scroll. not on Facebook no more. I just, and it's I, all like, over you there. are literally putting trauma in yes. literal front trauma. of people's eyes. But, but everybody's so TV. used to it now. That's oh the, that's the scare. But, like, that's why I get it. Like, is there an agenda? Because, like, to me, it comes off like an agenda because the people. If they can regulate nudity on, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. now, now granted, I get it. It's an algorithm. It's an artificial intelligence that does yeah. that. It's not one person, for y'all that don't know, it's not a one It's not one person that's just going through like, oh, well, this is nudity, blah, blah, blah. I get it that it's an AI. But at yeah. the same time, it's like we have to police a little bit better. Right. I'll say that's a good perspective. Like, I'm going to have to digest that because I literally never think about it being an agenda. I just am mm-hmm. like. Well, I'm an angle. I'm a conspiracy head. I'm going I'm to just put I'm that not. out there. I'm a conspiracy. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm not sitting here walking around, like, just spewing it out. Right. But, and not, like, whole, like, I'm one of those people to where it's like, I do have to so oftentimes see it to believe it. But at the same time, it's like, when I say I'm a conspiracy head, I just know conspiracy. Yeah. I don't per se believe it, but I'm deep into it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, it's interesting to me. Yeah. Like the whole flat earth round earth thing. Like I've been on that before that even, you know what I'm saying? Like that's the <laughs> whole thing. I get that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's just, but going back to what we were talking about, like, it's just interesting to see how numb we are. Yeah. At, we, like, are we are as a society? Because like one thing that I don't like is, and it, it burns me up to the core you'll see a police officer or something crazy happen that's that's rightfully unjust and you'll see everybody in the video doing this. Yeah. Yes. I can't like do something. Yeah. I can't stand it. And it's, it is like but but we we'll, we will also at the same time the next day after it happened probably the same people that took the video repost all oh, rest in peace and blah blah blah. We could have we could have altered that moment. Yeah. Yeah. We could have altered that moment. You know and it's like I don't know, bro. It's just it's just I try to watch what I say on social media about stuff like that. But and I, I try not to really vent about like how much that bothers me because you know people gonna per- people quick to cancel and perceive yeah. this the wrong way. Yeah. But in the same breath, it's like when are we going to like we get? I I would rather us go through an era of fixing and changing things than to go through an era of just reposting and nothing happens. Yeah. Right. Like don't get me wrong, I participated in a lot of the uh, the boycotts and the strikes and stuff like that. But I feel as though some things were. We we played a part because like we wanted to be a part and do make a difference. And then but sometimes it's posting it. E- mm. Exactly, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like it's like, but what are we actually changing? Yes. Right. I actually went out and like and I, and this is big for me because I I was big on well you know the votes don't count blah blah blah. Like I actually started voting. Yeah. I actually started getting deeper into what's going on around me, and I was like. Well, actually, <laughs> if we focus more so on the mayors and these people, we don't really have to worry about this. Yeah. Not say it doesn't matter, yeah. but it's like if we focus more towards this area than all of these other. Because like, well, y'all need to know who's in the blah, 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 blah. And I'm sitting here like, if y'all only know what this part of Louisiana is like, because I ain't going to put their business out there. But select amount of people that we are currently surround, surrounded by view things very differently. Yeah. You know, without saying too much. And yeah. it's but at the same time, you know how to good morning. You know, like you yeah. know how to you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, but what I am saying all to say is like it's crazy how social media been around like cause that was our really our generation when it first started. Yeah. Definitely. Like what, twenty two thousand like five? Well social media Facebook two thousand what I think it was 2000. It was somewhere. Yeah. It was somewhere yeah. around there, like well, I'm My, just like say, MySpace. No, yeah, I'm like just say early 2000. 2004. You yeah. know, it's like because like because if you technically want to be correct about it, the email and stuff was a part of social media. However you want to think about it, but like when it really started affecting mm-hmm. society, like 
in a bigger mass right. effect. Like a lot of this is a lot of our functioning now is predicated upon what has been happening on social media. Yes. Like right. a lot of things, like I'm one of those people that don't that like I'm appreciative that people are aware and they get upset about the things that are trending, but like you should not be Please shake that mouse if you if you don't if you feel like getting up because I'm just my nerves are bad. But um, but I feel as though we should already be upset prior to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like join join us. Like join the awareness. Join this that in the third. Join this that in the third. But make but also make sure that you're you're continuing your awareness. You know. I think that's why conversations like this are important and having people that you feel like support you in that. But there's a lot of people that are just like it is what it is. Yeah. Like, I can't do that's nothing scary. About it. It's mm. terrifying. That's scary. Yeah, it's, it's very terrifying. <laughs> because like what people don't understand, okay, you may not physically be able to do something, but you'll be surprised like whenever they start doing like the phone calls and call blah blah blah. Yeah. I'll be doing it. It's like call them, like send an email, like participate in sharing such and such and such until you're able. Cause like now, granted, it was a little too crazy whenever the laugh, well, the Lafayette stuff started happening. Like whenever we started doing like all the protests and stuff out there, yeah. then I saw cause I had we had our inside sources, and I saw what was really going down. I was like, mm. and that's only me knowing how you know how a police system is out here, you know. So it's like I had to think about like, okay, well, what am I going to do about this situation? How am I going to act about that? So me, Amber and I acted accordingly. I ain't gonna say everything we do ain't none of your business, <laughs> but but you get what I'm saying. It's like it's one of those situations to where it's like there's always a way to participate. Yeah. Go uh, go further than just posting it. That should be the that should be yes. just the first thing you do. Yeah, yes. post it, but like and also watch what you're posting. But post it, but at the same time, like. Be mindful. Just be yeah. mindful of the extra steps you can take to do something about That's something. True. Right. Right. Like whenever it was um George Floyd and like mm-hmm. all of that stuff was happening, I remember getting that like stream of like text yes. messages from colleagues that didn't look like me. They're like, mm-hmm. Oh, Brooklyn, how are you? You know, I hope everything That was okay. weird. Yeah, it's and like that was like, weird. What? You like, never thought to check on me? It's again? like it's like once it's like one thing this Unfortunately, happens quite often. It isn't thing. There's like probably the most famous one that that has happened right under Trayvon Martin. That you're saying, like, yeah, no, that you have to say yeah, it's mm-hmm. the most famous one. So it's like, it's like it is so very weird. It's like, how are you? How like just checking up on you? It's like, thanks. It's like, I'm. This isn't new to me. Thank. I'm glad it's new to y'all. I'm glad right, y'all have right. this awareness now. But it's like it, like, yeah, it comes off performative in mm-hmm. a way. It is so. performative. It is performative. Well, it strokes that ego. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break because my laptop about to die. Bye, y'all. <laughs>